It's that. Well, let's keep after them. They may not know they're over the border, and even if they do, it won't do them any they good. They know it all right, because they headed straight for it. I've got no authority in Canada, and they know that too. Come on. We could report them to that new police outfit they got up there. They said they'd cooperate with us, you know. The Northwest Bounded Police, you mean? Yeah. Do you know how many of them there are in all of Canada? No, how many? About 300. And besides, who are we going to report? They call each other Carrie and Dick. Thanks. That'll help a lot. Let's get out of here. Canada's a nice, peaceful country. Ever notice how big and friendly the trees are? <laughs> Nobody chasing. Very tasty, huh? Even the food seems to taste better up here. Yeah, this is the life, if you ask me. I didn't ask you. Oh, come on, Dick. Snap out of it. You can't stay mad at me forever. Things will work out for us, they always do. Yeah, maybe one time when they don't work out. It almost happened today. No, that wasn't even close. See, that was nice shooting you did. I just broke a few windows. I wasn't trying to hit anybody. Neither was I. I only winged one of them. Accidentally. I guess I'm not as good a shot as you are. Yes, you are, Carrie. Every bit. Well, it was self-defense. Yeah, it always is. Every time you're caught dealing from the bottom of a poker deck. What are you talking about? I wasn't dealing from the bottom of the... Look, I'm through pulling you out of trouble. You always fix it so we chase from one place to another. And now you've got us chased out of the country. Oh, well, Canada's a nice country. We ought to be able to make a pleasant living here. I'll stay out of trouble this time. And, Dick, this time, I mean it. I hope you do. Because I pulled you out for the last time. and only one Indian. Are you sure about that? What's the matter with you anyway, Dick? Oh, come on.
How's it look? It's all right. You'll have a nice scar, but that's all. You hadn't shoved me out of nail that in him before he had a chance to give me this. Yeah. Hey, Dick. Looks like you're right again. He did have some friends. Yeah. Looks like one of them sitting bull. I suppose he's doing way up here. Probably be run out of the state just as we were. Come on. There's generally meat. Yeah. Hey, wait a minute. We're going to be able to get a meal without going that far. Good afternoon, man. Good afternoon, Major. Just Sergeant. Something I can do for you? Well, your sign says applications now being accepted for service. That's right. Well, my name is Ross, Dick Ross, and this is my brother, Kerry. We're from Montana, down in the States. Have you had any experience? Well, yes, sir, a little. Headquarters right over there. Well, thank you. Come on, Kerry. Hey, Dick, you're not really serious about joining up with this outfit, are you? Well, I'm not sure yet. I want to find out a little more about it. Well, I've seen enough already. Like an army post. Everybody telling everybody else what to do. Corporals, sergeants. You never your own boss. You know, I'm not much of taking orders, Dick. Whatever you say, Kerry. I'll see you later. Hey, wait a minute. You're not gonna... I mean, Dick, we never split up before. I know. We don't have to split up now either. Just want to find out what kind of an outfit this is. And if they'll take us, can't be so bad. Besides, what else is there for us to do in Canada? We have no job, no money. You don't really mind working for a living that bad, do you? All right. What have we got to lose? Good day, man. Hello. Are you man to see about applications for service? Yes. You're both Americans. That's right. Fugitives from justice? None of your business. I thought so. Good day, gentlemen. Just a minute. We're just... Who are these men, Sergeant Major? Two American criminals applying for service, sir. No, we're criminals. Listen, you... Easy, Kerry. The sergeant's got it a little wrong. We're not criminals. Come on in and we'll discuss it. Uh, sit down, gentlemen. Which of the United States are you from? Quite a few. You understand this is a very necessary procedure, this questioning. I assure you both that I will hold your answers in strict confidence. 
If you have been involved in any sort of illegal activity in the past, I'm sorry, but we can't enroll you in the mounted police. We have a criminal record, sir. Carrie and I are brothers, originally from Montana. Cattlemen? Cow punchers. We've traveled around quite a bit, following the roundups. Had our share of trouble. Gunfights. Was it a gunfight that made you come? Yes, it was. We got into a gambling scrape in the Dakota Trail Tower near the border. Had to shoot our way out of it. I see. Was anyone killed? No, sir. I think we wounded one man, though. Very well. I appreciate your honesty. Do you know anything about Indians? We grew up in Indian country. That's good. Any military experience? No. Nope. I'll be just as honest with you gentlemen as you have been with me. We need men as horsemen. And the fact that you're familiar with Indians can be a great help to us. As for the service itself, I can't promise you any glory or even excitement. Because we try to avoid that. How many men do you have? Quota for this post is 29. Is that all? How about the other posts? Full strength, about 300 men. How many Indians are there? Oh, between 20 or 30,000. <laughs> Never could get an accurate figure. It's a big job, all right. It's impossible. We don't think so. Our Indians are good and loyal subjects. They seem to understand that we're here to help them. Oh, it's been a lot of work, but it's never been impossible. As for the rest, besides the pay, which is not large, the Queen furnishes uniforms, mounts, firearms, and subsistence. If you pass the physical examination and the recruit training course, you will be required to sign enlistment papers and to abide by our rules and regulations. Inspector, I'd like to join. All right. Me too. Very well. Sergeant Major. Yes, sir? Accept the applications of these men. Start them in training immediately. So? All right, you two. Follow me. Her Majesty's Northwest Mounted Police. You will be assigned patrol duties tomorrow. Sergeant Major? Sir? They're a fine looking troop. I'm proud of them. Thank you, sir. You may dismiss them, Sergeant, for the rest of the day. Yes, sir. Troop! And tra such a collection of beautiful young men all at the same time. Now, you listen to me, Bridget. My life is complicated enough without having to worry about you making eyes on every man. Wait, wait, where are you going? Oh, uh, the stuff in the wagon needs arranging. Huh? Hey, fellas, look who's there. She's real. She talks. Say something else, miss, so we'll know we're not imagining all this. Hello. Where are you from? What's your name? Her name is Bridget Fitzgibbon, and I'm her father, Patrick Fitzgibbon. Come on, lass. We'll be going now. Bye. 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 The Scotch and Irish always have been the best of friends, Miss Bridget. No reason to change that, is there? Valuable stuff. Yeah. Dangerous, too. Come on. Go on. <laughs> uh, the 
This is sure no rig for a fast draw. The hole might have been plugged 12 times before he got the flap for <laughs> Good thing you're not at home, huh? Hey, keep off my boat, will you? How do you expect me to pass inspection if you walk on? Ah! That is. Well, men, I've just received some news from the United States that's quite disturbing. You've doubtless heard of the Indian massacre of United States cavalry a few weeks ago. A place called Little Big Horn, I believe. According to the dispatch I received, the Sioux who perpetrated this massacre have escaped into Canada. Their chief, Sitting Bull, is here right now, Crowfoot's village, 20 miles away. So that's where he was headed. Saw him, Constable Ross? On our way up here, sir. How many braves would you say he had with him? Well, we didn't see them all, sir, and we didn't wait around to count them. Hmm. The United States Army feels that Sitting Bull would try to stir up the local tribes, take them back with him across the border, and wage a full-scale war against the Americans. Our orders are to prevent that from happening. I'm taking a detail with me to visit Crowfoot today. Please remember that the Indians are our friends and our responsibility. So conduct yourselves as what you are, representatives of the Queen. That is. Listen, Dick. Sitting Bull is within 500 miles of us. We belong somewhere else. What's wrong with the inspector, anyway? Nothing. He believes in something. I think he's right. Trumpeter, sound the fall in. from the right. Half sections right. to the south. We sought vengeance and we found it. You have heard how we slew Yellow Hair and every one of his bluecoats. There are many more and we will slay them all. We will take back our hunting grounds and hold them forever. And you, the mighty warriors of the Blackfeet Nation, you will share them with us. We are greatly honored the presence of Sitting Bull and his mighty warriors in our village. We hope that they will remain here for many moons. Our lodges are their lodges. We are proud to call them our brothers. We know of the hardships and suffering of our brothers, the Sioux and the Cheyenne. Consider how fortunate we are, my people. We have had no such hardship and suffering. We are at peace with the white man. You are at peace, you say. And why did the white soldiers ride into your camp? Greetings, Chief Crowfoot. The inspector is welcome at my village. And so are Chief Crowfoot and his braves, always welcome at the Queen's Fort. To them, the gates will never be closed. We are honored. The Queen sends her greetings to the great chief, Sitting Bull. She hopes that he and his people will prosper here in her dominion. I have brought my men so that our new neighbors may see their red coats. Look at them well, Chief Sitting Bull. They stand for justice and friendship. I do not see many redcoats. There are enough, because the Queen's soldiers are at peace with all 
honest men. Do I speak the truth, Chief Prophet? The hands of the White Queen have been gentle with my people. We have not driven from our lands, and most of the white traders have been fair with us. All the white traders will be fair with you, or they will be punished by the Redcoats. As long as this is true, there will be peace. And when this is no longer so? It will always be so. You have the Queen's word. All right, Sergeant. Patrol, heads left. My chief, I wish to speak of my brother Yellow Cloud, who was killed on the trail. It is forbidden to speak of the dead, unless it concerns vengeance. It does. One of the redcoats is the white man who killed my brother. The one whom you wounded? Yes. I'm sure he carries the mark of my arrow under the color of his red coat. I wish permission to avenge Yellow Cloud's death. It will be given, but not now. I too dream of vengeance against the Bluecoats. But this is not possible without Crowfoot's tribes. You must have patience, Blue Cloud, as I do. Crowfoot and his people have forgotten how to be warriors. But we will teach them again. You, Broken Lance, will take some braves. Find the white settlers. Kill them. Burn their homes. Strike swiftly and return here. When a few of the white settlers and their squaws are killed, the Redcoats will come here seeking vengeance. When that happens, Crowfoot's tribes will be angered enough to fight. Hey, Dick. Hmm? I don't think that scout recognized me, do you? No. If he had, he'd done something about it. Yeah. Guess you're right. Yeah. He'd move around to get a better look at my neck. Yeah, I saw him. Good thing these tunics have high collar. Well, you sure picked a good one to take a shot at. You see his headband? He's a chief's son. All right, you constables. I know you live a life of drudgery. So in the spirit of generosity for which all Scotsmen are noted, I interceded in your behalf with the sergeant major. At first, he was a wee bit reluctant, but with my great personal charm and powers of persuasion, I practically forced him to issue several passes for tonight. Will you listen to our bonny sergeant? <laughs> Haven't I said the man he is, regardless of what the rest of you think? Have you got the passes with you, sergeant? No, just my own. As for the others, they belong to the first Eleven men to reach the orderly room. You do that, you young Scotch devil, and I'll have you in the stables for a year. <laughs> <laughs> you've got 
cut it short. Aye, cut it short. It's getting late. Please, just one more. All right, lass. Do you, Bridget? What do you want to dance with the red coats with the heavy boots? You're drunk, Lou, but let me go! Drunk? Me, no. I just want to show them the right way to dance with the beautiful mademoiselle. Stop it, Lou! Let me go! You heard what the lady said? She said to let her go. Look, we'll have no trouble in here. All right. That'll be all. Sit down. All of you. Listen. Take scalps. Must have been in pretty much of a hurry. It's a Sioux arrow. Sioux, huh? Eh? Yes, sir. Well, they certainly didn't waste much time. Same constable. Yes, sir. They're both Sue. Where did this one come from? From a homesteader's body. He and his wife were killed this morning. Constables Clay and Morgan heard the shots, but when they got there, it was too late. More than likely the same one that attacked the wagon last night. Shall I mount the troop, sir? No, we can't arrest Sitting Bull. Much as I'd like to. We've no evidence except these. And no witnesses. If we put him in jail on suspicion for a while, that might help, sir. In that way. The suit would know we mean business. Do you think that would work, Constable? Well, if these raids were his idea, that would be exactly what he'd like you to try. He's not just an ordinary chief. And you couldn't arrest him with anything less than an army. A big one. And that would mean a war, which is what he wants. Uh, we've got to do something. If we could catch some of these Sioux Braves in a raid, even one of them, that way we'd have witnesses. You could have a trial. Make an example of it. From what you tell me, this Crowfoot is a great believer in the Queen's law. He is, so far. And he's the only one who can hold Sitting Bull in line. Help! I gotta get some help. What happened, man? The Indians. They're attacking the wagon train. Sergeant, come in. What's wrong, Dick? Indian trading wagons.
Sergeant, give me a detail. I'm going after Constable Ross. And do what you can for the wagon people. Yes, sir. A crane, hook, Gordon, and again. Queen soldier rides fast for one who makes the sign of peace. Yes, Chief. I ride in pursuit of a criminal who hides here. We hide no criminals in this village. My son Eagleheart speaks the truth. I also speak the truth. White man's wagons were attacked this morning. I followed one of the attackers here. That is his horse. That is the pony of one of my braves, Broken Lance. The animal has been where you see it since sunrise. A pony's hide does not sweat from standing still. I must arrest the man inside the teepee in the name of the Queen. He will be taken to the fort for trial. There will be no killing in this village. Stand aside. Will the great chief Crowfoot stand by while the Redcoats punish an innocent brave? The brave is innocent. He will not be punished. Stand aside! Drop that knife. You're under arrest. Here's your prisoner. Cook! McRae! Yes, sir. Take the prisoner into custody. Get him to the fort and have his wound dressed. The man will be given a fair trial, Chief Crowfoot. And if the wagon people and my men can identify him as one of the attackers, he will be hanged. If he is guilty, he must be punished. These arrows were found in two different places. One, a lone wagon, the other, a white man's cabin. Three white men and two women are dead. These are not our arrows. I know. The Queen Soldier is a brave man. Thanks. All right, men. My people are not at war with the white man. 
Nor do they wish to be. Perhaps the Sioux Braves do not understand this. Perhaps the great chief sitting bull has not explained it to them. Can a wolf be told he is now a rabbit? Easier than a Sioux warrior can be told he must forget his heritage. I am an old man and I have seen many animals. My favorite among them is the fox, who is not helpless like the rabbit, nor hated like the wolf. On the basis of the evidence submitted, the Supreme Court of has found the defendant guilty of murder. It is a sentence of that court that he be hanged by the neck until dead. chiefs together for a council of war. This is an honor, my friend. The Redcoats have murdered one of my braves. For that they must die. I am here now to invite you and your chiefs to my war council. My people will make no war against the soldiers of the White Queen, so long as their justice is good. You call this justice good? The hanging of a Sioux brave? I do. The brave was guilty. My council will meet without him. We will seek vengeance without your help. As long as the Sioux are guests in our land, they will do nothing to destroy our peace with the White Queen. We will not permit it. You mean your people would attack mine? I mean my nations would fight for peace and justice against any who sought to take it from them. Chief Crowfoot, I warn you... For that... every brave you command, I command ten, my brother. I think the chief of the Sioux will think many times before he attempts to make war now. Let us hope so, my son. I wonder who's dancing with that Fitzgibbon girl tonight. You suppose she really likes me? Of course she does, Mac. You wear a pants, don't you? <laughs> I guess she's just a flirt, all right. Sad, very sad. You don't know how lucky you are, Mac. It's open. Not me. I think I'll make a little test. Raise it, too. Five more. I'm out. Poker's becoming expensive, huh? I'll raise the five. Five. Five more. I'll call it. Cards, Mac? The top one. Like I'll need two. Russ, I said the top one. You dealt off the bottom. You must have made a mistake, Mac. You're a little excited. I made no mistake, Ross. You're a cheat! Why, you... Won't be hitting a lot again. Pick up your money, McRae. The game's over. You dealt off the bottom like he said you did. I saw it. Now, if you hit him again, it's me you'll be tangling with. Go!
Who did it? I did, Ross. Why? He cheated. He dealt from the bottom of the deck. Take it easy, mister. Well, it isn't the dancing man. What's your name, friend? Lee Burke. Put your hands up in the air and keep them there. Thanks. Beats trapping for a living. I trapped them all right, don't mind. Yeah, I watched you trapping. After the Indians hit him, you caught him with your bare hands. You gonna arrest me? Redcoat? What is this stuff? Beaver? Three. How many more in there like that? Seventy, eighty, maybe a hundred. All prime skins. Uh huh. You just take three or four at a time so they don't miss them, is that it? Supposing somebody took them all. What do you figure the Indians would do about it? What could they do about it? <laughs> Cigarette? Yes, sir. Maybe you and me better have a little talk. See? We talk. I wonder why the inspector sent for us. Well, he probably needs somebody with brains. Who else is there? <laughs> You've been in a pretty good mood lately. Beginning to sound like your old self again. Uh, why not? You can always find the bright side if you look hard enough. That's right. Even way up here in the Tulis. Inspector's waiting for you. I'll take you in. Constable Ross, sir. At ease. I have an important job for you two. Uh, you remember Eagle Heart, don't you, Ross? Yes, sir. How are you? He especially asked for your help. I thought it might take more than one man, so I sent for your brother also. You better tell the constables what you told me, Eagleheart. My fur had been stolen. The catch of a whole season. You sure it was done by a white man? Indians don't steal each other's furs. That's right, sir. They don't. The punishment is death and dishonor to the spirit. I want you to go with Eagleheart to Fitzgibbon's trading post to look over whatever pelts he's bought lately. Eagleheart says he can identify his own. Yes, sir. Here is my mark. And here.
and here. They are mine, all of them. All right, Mr. Fitzgibbon. We're taking these to the fort. What do you mean? They're my property. They're all paid for. They're stolen goods. If you can prove that you're Mark Eagleheart, you'll have your furs back tomorrow. I can prove it. What about my money? Who sold them to you? One of the trappers. The only way you can get your money back is by telling us who he is. What will you do to him? Put him in jail. And when he gets out? No, you won't. Not for quite a while. When he does, he won't bother you. <laughs> How do we know he won't? Because we won't let him. Yeah, well, I got your word for that. If that's not good enough for you, there's nothing more I can say. The mounted police will try to recover your money. If you help us. Wait! It was a trapper by the name of Lubach. Father! Francois Lubach. Bridget, I hope he's not a friend of yours. Of course he isn't. But if you arrest him, he'll be an enemy and he'll come back after my father. And you say you'll protect him. How do we know you'll even be around here then? We'll be here. Go on, Carrie. Make the identification? Yes, sir. His mark was on all of them. Who sold? A trapper named Lubach. Constable, take the evidence inside. Shall we bring him in, sir? No, I want you to come with me. We're meeting General Terry of the United States Army at the border tonight. Report to Sergeant Saxon. Yes, sir. Sir. May I bring in Lubach? Very well, Constable. Sir, is he going after Lubach alone? Yes. That man's rather dangerous. Or at least Fitzgibbon thinks so. Sergeant Major! Sir! Detail Constable McRae to assist Constable Ross. He's on his way to bring in a man called... You know where his cabin is located? I do, sir. All right, Sergeant. Hey, Joe! Half sections left! March! At the truck! all the shooting for? Let me pass. Not till I find out what this is all about. Where's Constable Ross? I have not seen him. Who are you shooting at? I do not know. Someone fired at me from hiding and I... What are you doing here anyway? I came to bring the trap of Lubach into your fort. Well, where is he? Back there. He has been shot. 
shot him? I do not know. You've got a lot of explaining to do. Turn around. Let's go back to the cabin. I did not kill this man. You had plenty of reason to. And what about Constable Ross? What... You killed them both. First Lubach, then the constable. You're under arrest. Wait. I tell you, I didn't. Don't tell me anything. Get on your horse. Inspector, nice of you to ride down to meet me. Nice of you to ride up, sir. Washington's authorized me to offer you my services. I've got two full regiments camped ten miles away and more available if we need them. That's very kind of you, sir, but I don't think we are quite ready for them yet. Well, but I understand you're having a lot of trouble with Sitting Bull and his people. Not a lot. Nothing we haven't been able to take care of ourselves so far. Well, I wish you'd tell us your secret. We've had nothing but trouble with him. It's not my doing. Crowfoot, chief of the Blackfoot Nation, is really responsible. He believes in our laws and justice, and he's done a lot to help us keep the peace. Well, now that Sitting Bull is in Canada, I'm afraid your peace won't last. Sooner or later, he'll start an uprising. It's our job to prevent that, sir, and I think we can do it. We can prevent it for you. We can march on Sitting Bull and take him prisoner. Then we'll try him and put him away where he'll never bother anybody again. Chief Crowfoot and his people have the Queen's promise of protection. If I allowed an attack on his camp, a lot of innocent people would be killed. He would never trust us again, and that's what our system is based upon, trust. We'll have to handle this our own way, sir, but we do thank you, most sincerely. Well, I wish you luck. But our offer still stands, any time you need us. Thank you, General. Left about. Oh. All right, Sergeant. Let's get back to our problem. Detail in half sections. March. Heads left. Is missing. Lubach's dead. 
and Eagle Heart's a prisoner, sir. Take my horse, please. I kept looking around for about an hour and calling out. I couldn't find him, so I came in with a prisoner in the trapper's body. Sir, may Go I? Go ahead, Ross. We'll hold the trial tomorrow morning, Sergeant Major. But, sir, supposing Ross doesn't find the... doesn't find his brother by then? Then the Indian will be tried for Lubox murder. Very good, sir. You'll testify, McRae. You ought to leave from all other duties until then. Constable, for once you're just the man I wanted to see. Someone snuck up here during the night and stole a horse. How did you know? I didn't. I just guessed. I'll need a fresh horse. You can keep mine until I come back. Right away, Constable. I'll switch your saddle for you. Thanks, and please hurry. Any of your saddles missing? No. I can't get very far without a saddle. I should be able to catch him by tomorrow morning. May I make you a cup of tea? No, thanks. I haven't time. You must be in an awful hurry. Who are you after? My brother. Your brother? Why? Killed a man. But must you go after him? Yes. Good animal for you, Constable. Thank you, Mr. Fitzgibbon.
now you know that when I spoke of the white man's treachery, I spoke truth. Eagleheart, the only son of your great chief Crowfoot, is a prisoner. The time has come for vengeance. We will kill the Redcoats and release the brave Eagleheart, and then sweep down upon the Long Knives to the south. It is the white man's custom to hold a council, which will decide whether Eagleheart will go free or be punished. We must wait, my people. We must wait to see if the White Queen's justice is good. And if it is bad, we make war. Carrie. You figured it out, huh, dear? Yes, I did. I'll accept one thing. Why? That's for money, Dick. That's all. The money Lubach got for the furs. You put him up to that too, didn't you? That's why you had to kill him, to shut him up. You were always pretty smart, Dick. Looks like they might hang young Eagle Art for what you did, Kerry. Sorry to hear that. That'll mean a full-scale Indian uprising. Setting Bull, Crowfoot, and all the rest of them. We gotta stop it. You can't stop those Indians once they get steamed up. You know that. Best thing for us to do is to keep heading south. No, Kerry. I'm taking you back. Listen, Dick. You're taking this thing too seriously. I wanted to take you back alive, kid, but I don't have to. Turn around. I'm sorry. Once he was your friend. Once he was my brother.
Now is the time to strike them. Why should we wait longer? We must wait for the judgment. I have messengers inside the fort who will bring me word of the decision. We know what the judgment will be. Death to your son. If we delay, he will... He is innocent, and he will not die. I, Crowfoot, promise this. Canadian government. I find it necessary to announce the findings of the court which tried Eagleheart for the murder of one Francois Lubach. That court finds the accused guilty of murder as charged and orders that he be hanged by the neck until dead. Have the trumpeter sound the fall in. has found the one who killed the trapper. Eagle Heart will go free. Are you sure of this, Blue Cloud? It was his brother. He takes his body to the fort now. You mean the red coat killed his own brother? No. I killed him to save the red coat's life. Once he saved mine. There will be no war, Sitting Bull. Eagleheart is innocent. What? Another man helped Lubak steal those pelts and then killed him to keep him quiet. Here's your murderer. Release the prisoner, Sergeant. Do the Indians know about this, Constable Ross? Yes, sir. Blue Cloud, one of the Sioux scouts, rode out to stop them. A white man's justice is still good. There will be peace. 